Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. With the turn of the month, we get a brand new monthly report. So let's take a look at all of the work done on Squadron 42 in the month of January. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members who make these videos possible. If you do enjoy my content and would like to support the channel even from as little as $1 a month, it is all very much appreciated. All the links are in the description below. So today we're going to check out the Squadron 42 monthly report. The PU monthly report will be coming hopefully tomorrow, so I will get on with that later today. Kicking off with General AI, the team have been improving debug draw for the special actions component that allows for better understanding of which actions are available at any given time. They also reorganized the AI teams into more efficient structures to encourage knowledge sharing and a more holistic approach to prioritizing tasks and goals. So the department is now split into content, features and tech. The AI content teams, they create behaviors, usables and other related content. The AI features team implement project features, for example, new combat behaviors and ship maneuvers and the AI tech team handles all core functionalities that require a more structural design. So starting with AI content, they have worked on early versions of engineering, hygiene, hawker and tourist behaviours. With the first pass on the engineer, handles maintenance operations for war panels inside ships and hangars, including inspecting internal fuses and replacing them if damaged. I think we heard about these in the last monthly report. The initial implementation of hygiene behavior gives NPCs the ability to use toilets, sinks and showers, while the hawker is a generic activity that handles various street vendors and speakers, for example, NPCs that man the hot dogs or taco stands. For the first pass of the tourist behavior, this deals with characters going to and traveling around areas to look at points of interest. The team will also look to introduce new behaviors like leisure and eating and drinking activities such as using vending machines and arcade machines. So quite a lot of work there going on for various NPC activities that will also be applied to the PU population of NPCs. So some great work getting done. It'll be an amazing day when we see all of these NPCs moving around the verse, going about their day-to-day -day tasks, just making the verse feel so much more alive. So the AI Features team introduced the first traits affecting AI pilot tactics selection, allowing them to craft more realistic and personal encounters. For example, some pilots will choose safer approaches during combat while others will show off and use specialist maneuvers. Support for different operator modes began, which will enable NPCs to correctly use the same new functionalities exposed to players, including setting quantum travel mode when they want to quantum jump, and then returning to default mode before piloting or fighting again. For enemy combat, dodge actions now utilize blend space, allowing NPCs to align correctly when dodging for a more fluid and immersive combat experience, more controls were introduced to define attack action limits and to allow the interruption of combo attacks. So I guess maybe there's some counter option during melee attacks. And finally, they added the weapon confidence stat that's used to control the firing pace for characters based on their weapon proficiency. So basically, each NPC will have more skill in some weapons over others and that will show in their ability to use them. For the AI tech team, they implemented new functionality to validate subsumption code events, which allows them to verify bad setups, missing files, and ensure that variables carried by events are configured correctly. They also began supporting feature tests for subsumption behavior and logic, which gives them flexible ways to request the executable of specific logic to NPCs that stacks on top of the systemic behaviors at the appropriate time. The team also optimized the subsumption debug task tree and subsumption update. This will reduce runtime allocation, bringing the performance of the internal build closer to that of the release build. And finally, the subsumption update reduces locks in the memory allocator. Local tests have been shown that this saves around 5 milliseconds when updating 500 active NPCs at a given time. So some very impressive improvements here, which will just help to ensure that all the work is accurate and not going to cause any problems. Plus, plenty of optimizations to help improve the performance, which is always great to hear. Now, the animation team worked on the Hertz locomotion, final animations for mounted guns, the vault parallax animations, short distance staggers, mag stripping state machine blockouts, 
0G traversal and player fall to move forward assets. So loads of animation work here. Great to hear that they're already on with figuring out how mag stripping is going to work. That's going to be a great asset when it gets in game. For AI, the animation team implemented final motion capture for a number of sets and they also progressed with state machine graphs for mess hall sitting and eating, character wild lines, formal rail leaning, vending machines, wall panel maintenance, the weapons vendor and guard animation sets to combine with patrolling. I'm really looking forward to being able to visit a weapon shop and have an NPC hand me a weapon to look at it. I really hope that one day soon we get more realistic engaging NPC vendors around the verse. Doesn't feel like we're going to be waiting too long for this now, especially with these spawn lockers coming in. Hopefully that will help improve the performance with getting NPCs actually working as intended. Finally, for combat AI, focus was on motion capture implementation and blockouts for the Van Duel, pinning the player characters down. So note to self, do not get too close to the Van Duel. For character art, the team's main focus was on Rebecca Treo, with the team polishing her head, creating hair, I'm assuming using this new hair tech, and developing a new outfit. Old Man, or Mark Hamill's character, received polish as well, which predominantly involved adding the new eye assembly and revisions were made to the Jean and passed on to tech animation for rigging. Uh, a few minor characters also received new assets and polish passes. The weapon art team continued to work on the Vault Parallax Electron Rifle, taking art to grey box complete and the majority of the mesh was modelled and the team are currently rigging and animating the weapon before heading further into final art phase. I'm really loving the look of this weapon, it'll be cool to see what it can do in game. It's also nice to see some more exotic style weapons coming in as well. The Utiliflex Novia Crossbow progressed through final art and was handed over to Tech Art to finalise the rig. I really wish I'd backed Shroud of the Avatar just for that crossbow, to be fair. Uh, earlier this month, they began investigating mag stripping to assess what will be needed once the feature work starts. The team took this opportunity to make a pass on the grip nodes setup as well, but I'm not sure what grip nodes are. If anyone does have a clue, do drop a comment, please. The team also added a new healing multi-tool attachment. They updated the battery and resource canister to be detachable to future-proof the weapon for additional functionality. And finally, for FPS weapons, they began work on a new standalone Grey Cat cutting tool. So, quite a lot to go on there. Firstly, this medical attachment looks like it's a full top rail swap, not just an attachment like we see with the mining laser and tractor beam. Also, I do wonder why there's a reflex sight on it. How far will we be firing this medigun? But secondly, it's great to hear that they are updating the battery and canister to allow us to eventually need to replace the battery or choose what drug or medical canister we need for whatever treatment. What I found most intriguing though was how they mentioned a new standalone grey cat industrial cutter tool, which isn't referring to the multi-tool attachment. This is a dedicated cutting tool, most likely for something like salvaging, also made by grey cat, but I'm really looking forward to seeing all of these various dedicated industrial tools rather than having to just use the multi-tool. Finally, for ship weapons, work continued on the Firestorm Kinetics Colossus Moab, or Mother of All Bombs, which moved to Final Art, plus development on a all-new ship weapon begun. So for cinematics, with a successful chapter milestone in December, this saw the cinematics team kick off, polishing further chapters to production quality, with the team creating a pipeline for this and further milestones, dividing the production phases into separate passes. So we have previs, meaning performance capture cameras, effects, and so on are added in a crude form. Then there's kickoff, being the basic pass to loosely align all the scenes. Implementation, in which full alignment is done. Animation fragments are created and look IK is enabled. Then production, where all animations are polished to the highest standards amongst other things. And finally, it's finalization, which is the final pass before shipping. So hearing that the team is polishing further chapters to production quality means it's the second to last stage for many of the chapters. So that is great news to hear. For gameplay features, the Squadron 42 feature team implemented new track view weapon functionality to allow cinematic designers to control characters firing missiles. 
They looked into how TrackView could be updated across multiple cores for performance, as currently it's single threaded and automatically pre-caches animations to stop glitches when it's waiting for an animation to load. They also fixed problems with moving the missions to work with object container streaming and went through the requirements of mission fail conditions. And finally, they continued to help develop the firing range and get that fully working in game. The gameplay story team are moving the mocap captures through the pipeline and finishing off a handful of polish tasks for the Morrow Tour. Alongside this, they updated and maintained scenes for chapter 4A and progressed on other sections, including the first chapter. The graphics team started the year finalising several outstanding bugs and features. Once complete, Focus moved back to the Gen 12 renderer, which received various improvements to features like depth of field. A major rewrite of the tessellation shaders was done to streamline code and fix a number of bugs, and a shadow pass conversion was also completed, with the team now looking to see if they can enable this code path by default. The level design team are currently working through all ground-based FPS environments, adding additional setup for the various player paths. The space and dogfighting team worked alongside AI to bring an enemy faction combat behaviors to the gold standard. I do wonder what that faction is. Could it be the Van Duel, perhaps? The narrative team continued to review progress on various levels, including calling out potential moments that require additional dialogue or scenes to help explain gameplay intent or just make it feel appropriately populated. They drafted initial ideas for the target range on board the Idris, which covered everything from general training to game modes and supported other departments with environmental documents, mission text and script revisions. I do hope that once they get this firing range complete, they introduce it to players somehow without having to wait for Squadron 42. I know they mentioned a little while ago that they could bring it to a planet side weapon shop like Area 18, and I'd love to get a firing range just for practicing various with various weapons. But also it sounds like they're going to have different game modes that will take us through different training sessions, so I'm excited to see that. For QA, they work to help ensure scenes are working correctly and are of the expected quality, and they also tested various changes and updates across the project. Now, tech animation kicked off with the Jean character body and facial rig and are currently exploring the alien species language and body movements and joint placement. Time was also devoted to the Vandal combat behaviours animation implementation and head rigging for upcoming cinematics and this all tied into rigging work underway for the creatures to be found in the PU so very happy to hear they are moving on with the persistent universe creatures firstly though seeing the Jean walking around will be pretty epic when that day comes and secondly all of this work is contributing to the persistent universe creatures seeing the very first creature planet side will just blow my mind and I can't wait to see the Van Duel and how they fight. So lots of cool stuff going on with tech animation. Now the UI team worked to implement the new Aegis UI HUD into the Gladius, while artists created and updated UI for the RSI or Robert Space Industries brand that'll feature in several campaign ships. Now personally, I think the revamping of all manufacturer HUDs will make the game feel pretty fresh considering we have had the same HUD with different varied layouts from the beginning of the verse, so getting these new updates will just make every ship feel a bit newer. The UI programmers began the groundwork for an improved star map, interior map and radar. This is a significant project, they say, and will take several months to complete, but will greatly help with navigation around the game world. So the new star map really cannot come soon enough. It's a shame it's going to be several months, but it'll definitely be worth it when it does come. It'll be a huge improvement for every single player. It's frustrating for veterans trying to remember the workarounds. And for new players, I expect it's just like banging your head against a wall. Also, having an interior map and FPS radar will be so useful. Finally, we have the visual effects team who fleshed out the interior cells of the coil and progress was made on Chapter 4's visual effects requirements. So that is the Squadron 42 monthly report for January. Loads of excellent work being done, especially in AI. The progress they are making, implementing traits and behaviors for NPC crew and planetside population NPCs is so important. And I do hope that we get to see this soon. I do expect when Tony Z releases this deep dive he's spoken about into the quantum system and all the other tech that they've been working on, we should see some actual in-game or in-engine examples of how it all looks and works. 
Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I will be working on the Persistent Universe monthly report, hopefully releasing that tomorrow. So if you do enjoy my content, please consider hitting subscribe and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. If you could do the channel a big favor and hit that thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to talk more about Star Citizen, do come and follow me over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. Everybody is welcome. The link is below. Also, links to my Patreon and channel members are below as well. Thank you so much for all of the support. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.